Hi and welcome to my one day late day six of the 100 day project and today I'm going to attempt to make an expandable file folder. I received one of these from Maureen of Mo's collection and then also uh, I saw my sister got given one as one of her um, birthday friendship thing um, and a lady did a really nice one there so I was inspired to try one myself so I've picked um, six envelopes the cream envelopes and I got a piece of Tim Holtz scrapbooking paper and I've cut the paper down so it's just slightly wider than the envelopes now I'm going to show you the measurement I think they measure these envelopes measure I think I showed you before measure just under nine inches um, so I've only it's only just a couple of mils larger the paper to make sure that it covers the edge so with all of the envelopes what I've done is I've actually glued down the flap um, so that they were sealed and then I've just done a very small cut along the top to um, so that they can open I'll just fast forward through that part now so now I've trimmed the top of all six of my envelopes and made sure that I can open them up just in case there was any glue that kind of leaked on the inside and just making sure that those corner parts are glued down well so the next thing I'm going to do is I get my piece of scrapbooking paper and I like the Tim Holtz one because it's double sided so I've used that kind of the the reverse side the blue side because I thought that went along with the ocean and then you'll see just a little part of this on the inside and I thought that that was a nice decoration so I'm just lining up my envelope I was originally going to measure it with a ruler but it's just as easy just to line it up and I'm making a tiny little mark on my page so I know where to fold it again just giving a meal or two extra so that I make sure it fits my envelope properly Now you need to have a little uh, fold gap at the bottom because you need to give your file folder a little bit of space for the envelopes to expand when they get filled with things like ephemera. So from memory, I actually left a gap of around, I think it might've been about half an inch, um, but you can, you can gauge it depending on how thick your stack of envelopes glued together might become. So, I think it was around half an inch or around like one centimeter which is a bit less than half an inch so you can see I just showed you that it's got a gap there I'm just checking to make sure it's all nice and straight and now I'm going to um, do the exact same thing at the top I'm going to fold the width of the envelope and then I'm going to make a little um, fold gap as well just to allow the envelopes to expand So you'll see as I bring the ruler in now, I'm showing you that it's actually half an inch, the gap that I leave to allow for the expansion of the envelopes. So I fold two lines at the bottom and two lines at the top and I'll show you what that looks like. So there you go. My outside folder is ready to go to be decorated. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort out my envelopes. So I've got my six envelopes that are all sealed and then I've cut the top off so that the, it's like a pocket so it can be opened. So now what I do is on each side of the envelope, I mark two centimeters from the end of the envelope. You could do about one inch. Um, it's funny, I switch between centimeters and inches all the time. I'm used to using inches for sewing, uh, but then in Australia we use centimetres, so I do think in both ways. So what I'm doing is I'm going to cover the back with glue, but leaving that two centimetres on the end of each envelope with no glue. I'm just putting a book page down to get a clean line with the glue. This is a bit fiddly. I'll show you the first one and then I'll forward through the rest. And all I'm doing is I'm going to be gluing my stack of envelopes together.
they're just lining up one of the new envelopes with the one I just put the glue on lining it up nicely smoothing it down so you'll see that it's going to make two pockets so I repeat the process for all six of the envelopes marking out the two centimeters applying the glue and sticking it to the stack so this is envelope number six and now all six of my envelopes are stuck together in one stack So coming back to my cover, it's now time to decorate and I'm going with the Ocean Great Barrier Reef theme. Now I've been to the Great Barrier Reef in Australia a couple of times and went snorkeling there not too long ago and it's just one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen. So I'm using all old images that of course, guess where I found them? The Biodiversity Heritage Library on Flickr. And I just love them because they're old fashioned illustrations of I've got a whole bunch of sea life. I've got fish. I've got crabs, although I don't use any crabs. I've got a shark. I've got sea urchins, shells and lots of coral and also seaweed and things like that. So it's a nice range. And they look really good once they're done. Nice and colorful, just like the Great Barrier Reef. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just layering up the background with some different papers. Um, I've got a mix of neutrals and also some book pages that I've dyed. Now someone did ask me the other day um, what kind of dyes did I use to do my papers. So for the most part, the ones that you'll see that have blue tones and aquatones and stuff, I actually use um, the Dil Dilution Spray ink. I have no idea how to use the spray ink properly, but I bought it years ago and I've never really used it. I've only got about four colours, um, but I've decided to start using it to dye paper. The paper's really interesting. I, I just put um, the paper in warm water and then I spray in some ink and it mixes around. Some of them will come out a lot brighter than others, depending on the type of paper. But you can see a really pale blue one there that I've put on, and that's one that only soaks up a tiny bit of the color whereas some of the other pages get a lot darker so it's quite good because you get even in the same dye batch you get a bunch of different shades so once I've left them in the dye sometimes you know it's it's you know only for a few minutes and then sometimes I might leave them for about half an hour um, I put them in a oven on on a lower heat in Australia I put it on about 140 and I just put them onto a special tray that I use to dry my papers. If you see me use any of the pink papers, um, if they're really bright pink, I've used the spray ink. But if they're a lighter pink, then they're the ones that I've avocado dyed. And then, of course, I also have tea dyed papers as well.
So there's my first side done. Um, just when you're doing this, you've just got to be careful about which way you're doing your collages. If you want them all facing up or you want them all facing the same direction. I have them all facing up, which means that when it's laid out flat, one looks upside down, the others look the right way up. But when you fold it, they're all the right way up. So I'm just going to forward through. I, I end up doing the base papers for the rest of the folio before I start decorating. I'm just going to forward through that a bit because it'll take a little while for me to do. All right, so I opened it right out and I've, I'm doing the background for the whole lot. In hindsight, I might have been better to do the background for the whole folio rather than I decorated one side first. It just might have been easier. And also I'm crossing some of the papers over the fold line so that um, it actually wraps around, which looks good once it's done. So I'm just about done with the backgrounds and then I'll start decorating the sides. All right, my backgrounds are fully um, decorated and now it's time to start decorating um, each side. So as I said, you just need to be careful um, the direction with which you're going to collage. So you can see that this collage is going in the opposite direction of the other one. That's because when you fold up the folio, they will all be collaged upwards so they look correct. So uh, these are some old images of different types of seaweeds and corals that I'll be sticking on top of my base papers as the background and then I'll start to embellish with some of the sea animals like the fish. So here come my fish. I love this first one. I've fussy cut them right down onto the actual picture. I haven't left a little white space around the outside like I've done with some of the coral. Um, I love this fish, that blue and blue and blue stripe one. It looks like a rugby jumper to me. So once you're satisfied with your layout, you can go ahead and glue your fish down. All right, the fish are done. Now for a few more little embellishments. So shells and sea urchins. All right, so now it's time for the top flap. Again, being mindful of which direction you're going to collage. So this is a shorter flap. So I actually end up cutting down some of my seaweed and coral just to fit the top flap. But I really like the way they sit in the background. It just 
it adds more interest and depth in your collage. So there we have it, the outside is pretty much done. Now when I fold it up you'll see that the collages are facing the right direction and just checking to see if any little papers are lifting up and if I need to stick them down a bit better, which, which is the case. Okay, now that I've got everything pretty well stuck down, I decided to actually Mod Podge over the top of the whole collage um, because firstly, some of those papers are still just coming up a little bit, especially where the folds are. So the Mod Podge will help to seal it and keep them down. And the main reason is because if I'm gonna use this folder quite a bit to put ephemera in and open and close it and open and close it and open and close it, I think it'll get a bit of rough treatment and it could get damaged and papers could start peeling up. So by putting Mod Podge over the top, it helps to seal it and protect it from damage. And the other thing that it does, once you see when it dries, is the colours come up just even a little bit brighter. They actually look really beautiful. So I printed these images with a inkjet printer. I've got one of the, um, just got recently one of the Epson Echo Tank printers. And you can see that none of the colors are running. It's fantastic. It's the first time I've tried Mod Podge over the top of um, images that have been printed on an inkjet printer. Um, I ha did have a previous inkjet printer, which was a much cheaper one, and I had issues with it. If you put glue anywhere near it, you'd get watermarks that look terrible. So it's good to see that the, the new printer is working well. So I forgot to add the type of Mod Podge I'm using. I'm using the matte one. I prefer the matte one to the glossy one. All right, now back to my envelopes. They're all stuck together. And what I decide to do using my rotary cutter that I've got from quilting, I decide to trim the top openings um, just to square them off and make sure that they're all even if I haven't absolutely perfectly lined them up. And the other thing that I've also done is I decide to stick a bit of gauze across the bottom using PVA glue just to give it a bit more strength where the envelopes are joined for the times that you're going to be opening and closing them.
Now here comes my folder and look how bright those colours are now. And also I did a little bit of collaging on the inside. I had to put that cute little squid somewhere. You'll see in a sec. It's super cute. But those colours are so bright, just like the Great Barrier Reef is. Look at that squid. How cute is he? Anyway, it's time to stick the envelopes into the outside cover. And I'm going to do it with PVA just to make sure that it's a really strong hold. So I put PVA all over the envelope and then I stick it to the cover. One side's glued down, now it's time to glue the other, just checking that everything's lining up nicely and again using the PVA all over the envelope to get a nice firm hold. So now I just stick some clips on either side just to hold it for a little while while the glue's um, sticking properly just so it doesn't come undone. So my folder's all nice and dry and as you can see I've just stuck a little eyelet in the front flap as well so i'm just showing you how it expands there are six envelopes in there so six pockets and i'm just going to use a little bit of twine to put through the eyelet wrap it around a few times and tie it up so all done there's my little expandable folder and bonus i made another little one Similar similar idea, I'll show it to you in a minute, um, very similar concept, although I didn't film the process. So let's have a look inside my main one. So we've got the beautiful fish and the coral and the shells, etc. on the inside and outside. Particularly love that side, it's so colourful. And now I'm going to show you what's inside. So I made one tag, I only did one. I just really liked that whale image, I thought that was cool, so I wanted to make a tag for that one. And now these are my postcards that my son made. I can't believe what a good job he did. So he's got little quotes from Nemo, fish are friends, not food. And he's got a shark on there, so Bruce the shark. And his postcard number two is just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. Sorry about the singing. And there's number 42, Wallaby Way, Sydney. So we put 42 on there. And then mine, 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 mine. The seagulls. Anyway, he literally, he was watching Nemo on his phone while he's making postcards to go on my folio. I thought he did a great job. So here's the mini one. What I did is I cut, I had these little mini envelopes. So I cut um, some pieces of cardboard to the size of the mini envelopes. And then I stuck some Tim Holtz scrapbooking paper, leftover scraps from the other one I used, and I just decorated them and I mod podged them as well. Um, it's not folded over like the other one. It's literally just two pieces of cardboard stuck on the envelopes and the envelopes get stuck together in the exact same way as the large folio. So the little one is just a small bonus. So here's some pictures of what I've done for my fishy ocean Great Barrier Reef project and I hope you like the end result. Okay, see you later. Bye.